Alright, we're back with more Metal Gear. That's right, it's time to be big boss and do big boy things. So, let's get into it. Last time, uh, pretty much finished up the tutorial and we're ready to get into these very easy non-tutorial missions. So, uh, we're just going to do them in order. You can do them whenever you want. Uh, there's, you know, no real, uh, problem with doing five before four and four before three. You know, the story kind of pans out the same way. These are all really just, you know, main side missions, you want to call it. They're like main missions, but also kind of side missions, you know, with a little bit of story sprinkled in there, here and there. So, uh, you can read the description, or, and, or, and, or, I'm dyslexic, so either way, uh, you could hit the Y button, and Miller will commentate on the mission. Uh, but he pretty much says what the description says. So, we're going to go in here. we got to eliminate uh, a commander, uh, or, uh, what is this, uh... Uh, yeah, operating in Afghanistan, so we're going back to Africa. And, uh, basically says they're ready for a fight, but, you know. Also, you can see, top right, uh, obtainable skills and or blueprints. It says gunman. So that means that there is a guy somewhere in this mission that has a skill called gunman. And you can see, it's not, you can tell it's not a blueprint because it's like the little circle and it has like the two swords crossing. A blueprint is usually, I think, a picture of a briefcase, and that's really the only way you can tell the difference between the two. Um, but, you know, it's it's pretty obvious when you see it. I don't think we've had a mission really, yeah, see, these are all, like, cross swords. Uh, that kind of sounded weird. I'm not talking about urine. Uh, none of these have a, there's a blueprint one. Um, so, see, you've got a bionic specialist. That's a skill. That's a guy that has a skill that means he's a bionic specialist, which will, you know, help us unlock more stuff for R&D and then uh, it looks like it actually kind of it doesn't look like a briefcase it kind of looks like a gas can or canister with a wrench on it uh, so that's a blueprint also it says blueprint on the side didn't remember that so there you go that's how you know whether it's a skill or not but anyway let's not delay anymore let's get into this mission, mission uh, a hero's way pick our landing point Heading doesn't matter time. we're just gonna go in either way also we gotta pick our loadout we have our buddies and different weapons and stuff uh, we might get some notifications about stuff being developed, because uh, I am developing stuff for our future missions. Um, for Afghanistan, I usually go with this uh, uh, Tiger uh, Stripe uh, Camo or Desert Fox. Um, it really doesn't matter. Both work fine. Whatever you do, definitely go with the scarf, because it's the coolest looking one. And uh, Snake doesn't really have any head options, so we're okay in that department. If he plays a different person, I don't know if we, yeah, we don't have anybody else available yet, but usually they have like a Bellaclava, I think I'm saying that. It's basically like a ski mask, and there is like a couple different ski masks for different scenarios. I usually just use the stealth one. We don't have any vehicles, I don't think. Nope. It also doesn't cost any additional money to deploy with a vehicle, so if you had one, go for it. Um, we don't have anything for the horse, really. We do have the horse. You might as well take him with us. Uh, I think it does cost a little bit extra. I don't know if it says it somewhere. Uh, no, actually, for the horse, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, primary weapons, we're pretty much going to go with this. We don't have anything else. I think for support weapons, we do have some stuff here we can look at. I did develop C4 for us, so in case we need that, we'll take that with us. And we're pretty much good to go. We'll look at our items real quick, see what we got. And we did upgrade our box to Desert Box, you know, in case we should require that. Uh, tools, no need to go into that. We're all pretty much good to go, so let's go in. We'll pick 1,800. I usually always pick 1,800 hours. That's uh, pretty much 10 o'clock, I think, military time. Could be wrong. Um, but anyway, it's just before nighttime, which means you're going into the mission in the night, in the dark, in the night, during the night. Night Rider style. So, uh, yeah, that's how I usually like to do it. It's usually easier. And for the most part on this walkthrough, I will be going through uh, probably during the night time. Uh, unless it makes me go through during the day. And that might be a problem for some people because I've heard some people say that this game, it can be hard to see during the night and it would kind of ruin your walkthrough if you were doing it at night. But uh, I think it's okay. I've seen some nighttime footage and it seems okay. It's not really... Um, whole lot to be missing anyway it will highlight things that are important so you know
All right, so see, it's uh, we have an elimination mission here, but they kind of give you freedom of choice. You're going to eliminate him or you're going to extract him. I'm going to be extracting him. We want his skills. Also, during the beginning, it always says, like, see, creative producers written by and featured guests. Uh, I always hated that it did that. Um, I'm okay with it, you know, naming off uh, Kojima every, you know, every start, start of every mission. But I hate it when it does the guest stars. I feel like that kind of, um, kind of spoils what's in the mission for you. Because sometimes it'll say, like, it'll even say, if you were to run into, like, a boss or something like that, it would say the boss is, like, guest starring in the mission. You're like, oh, well, that's kind of a spoiler, ain't it? So, uh, here we are in this mission. Just gotta head this way till we get to our objective. Shouldn't take too long. Camo's looking good. I am glad that we, uh, we have this camo. I like this camo. Was this Desert Fox or was this, uh, Tiger Stripe or something? I forget what I got. Not sure why it's, why it's called Tiger Stripe. Is there a tiger that kind of looks like that? I'm not really sure. Oh, didn't want the box. I like to use the night vision goggles at night. It sometimes helps. Ah. Uh, not a whole bunch though. Mm, until we upgrade them. You can upgrade them later. Uh, for most missions I like to go through, try and mark as many people as you can. Um, we'll get something for this later. But for now we kind of got to do it the old fashioned way. And if we get spotted it's not a super big deal. That's kind of what reflex mode is there for. Also I'm not in too much trouble because I already know this mission. I kind of know where a lot of people are hanging out. Um... Oh, there's a guy. Maybe we can get him before he goes around the mall. There we go. Okay. Now uh, we just need to get down there without killing ourselves. Always look before you leap, especially if you're in a vehicle. I don't know how many times I've just ran off the side of a cliff like an idiot in a vehicle. Flipped my Jeep. It exploded. Killed me. So, uh, yeah, we just got to get in here. And you don't really know where the guy is, but uh, it's kind of obvious. I mean, there's the big building right there. That's probably where he's hanging out, right? And for the most part, that's kind of like the only building in this joint. So, uh, you know, we're supposed to get somebody important. Where do you think they're hanging out? Probably the big building. So let's go hang out in the big building with them. Also, this is a mode of fast travel. And uh, what you want to do is you want to come over here and grab that. That's an invoice. And what that allows you to do, we probably can't do it right now. But if you get in your box on this thing, it'll pop up. Yeah, hit the Y button. And any invoices you've collected, you can fast travel to those invoices, or those, you know, destinations. It's kind of like a mailing service, you know, they put you up in this little box, and then, you know, they transport you somewhere. So that's a really good way to fast travel, if you're needing to get to one side of the place, or one side of Africa to the other side of Africa. Uh, because Africa is a very big place, and it's also hard to get around in this place. On account that, you know, there's mountains everywhere and it's really hard to uh, drive over those mountains. For the most part, it's kind of impossible to drive over the mountains. I didn't pick the best way to come into this thing either. I mean, it'd be better to go around this way. But as long as you're prone, you're usually okay. No one's going to see you. I'd usually come in from the other side, to be honest. But, you know, we came up from this side. So, uh, so you know, looking back on it now, maybe having the drop zone be on the uh, there was two drop zones we could have picked for the helicopter to land at maybe the other one would have been a little bit better than this one i think from over here we're pretty much good though i don't think anyone's really going to see us moving up this way if they do we can always take them out it's no big deal i'm going to get my gun out though you make you want to make sure you have uh, i like to have you know especially if you're a beginner like a lethal weapon out See, this guy might see us, which is no big deal. Let's put him to sleep. Don't want to worry about him anyway. I like to have a fully automatic weapon out, because when you go into reflex mode, you're only going to have so much time to take a guy out. And if you're using the single shot dart gun, then it can be a little bit difficult to take a guy out sometimes, especially if they're farther away. So I like to use the um, assault rifle. It's lethal, and some people don't like to be lethal. But that's okay. There's also a mouse here. I almost want to shoot him. Take him with us. Come here. Okay. Well, what are you going to do? 
couldn't get him. It's no big deal. All right, so we'll go this way. Also, remember to be aware of you know people around you because they can hear you moving around. So it looks like there's a guy in a bread over there. That looks like our target. That's the target. Looks like we found him. Yeah, the commander usually is always wearing a barrette. So, you know, if you want to give away, if you want to know what the tell is, you know, for whether that guy's important or not, he's usually, you know, wearing a barrette. So, yeah, that guy's important. That's the guy we're here for. Also, everybody's kind of moving around. It might be shift change. That's actually a real thing in this game. Uh, night shift comes out during the night and then day shift and there's also a time where the two shifts kind of um, go in for each other and they uh, you know switch it all up and whatnot. I am worried about this guy I'd like to get this guy out of here if possible you know extract him that's what I like to do if I don't want him waking up later but I don't want to kill somebody so we might do that we might shoot this guy too. I'm going to try and shoot him anyway. We're having a little bit of a rough time. I think we pegged that guy. We'll peg him one more time. You don't have to get a headshot, especially if they're farther away. Uh, the sleeping, the darts will take effect eventually. And when they do, he'll just, yeah, see, he'll pass out. He'll be good to go. Um, if you want to speed it up, you can, you can bip him twice. That's sometimes what I like to do is a little bip, a little second bip. I thought I heard somebody making noise. Oh, yep, I see this guy coming. We'll dip him too. And there, now we don't got to worry about these guys. I might string these guys up. Uh, somebody might hear us, but it, it's not going to be a super big deal. Uh, just want to get these guys out of here. Also, that's more personnel for us. Uh, usually I found if you want to play it safe about 50 meters will do uh, Sometimes depending on what's in between you 40 meters will do Yeah, see looks like that guy actually did pick up on something not a super big deal though oh. I think that was actually our target so if he comes out here to investigate We'll actually be in good shape because then we can just take him too. Uh, it looks like they're all kind of... It also can work as a very good distraction. If you're needing a distraction. Uh, we're not super in need of a distraction. But I think we'll be okay. Oh. Well, I didn't want to super... I didn't want to do exactly that. But that also works. I want to come around this way. They'll go and investigate that. Probably not find anything. And then they'll go back to their normal patrol. I like to come around this way. This is usually my entry point. Come around this way, and you can actually climb up here, and then you're, you know, kind of good to go. Crouch down if you need to. Not super important, but I'm just trying to stay low. Also, when you're prone, they can't hear you moving, so you don't have to worry about moving slow. Uh, you probably can't hear it, but there are music. There is music playing, and if you find the radio, this doesn't look like it's the radio. You can usually take the tape and listen to it. seeing anything. Uh, so this guy might come back up here. I'm gonna wait for him. Scratch my head. Making sure uh, if my hair is still up there. It is. I'm okay. I shouldn't be going bald yet. I'm only in my 20s. So uh, let's see. This guy come up here. We probably can choke him out. I don't think we got an interrogator yet so we probably can't understand what they're saying. He might go above us. Which is also okay. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to do. I like to avoid doors if you can. Because when you open them, they can hear it. Um, and I kind of figured that I think as long as you're moving slower, there's a less chance that they'll hear you. But still, I don't really like the chances. It's, it's kind of weird how that works. Because actually, if you um, just bust through a window, a glass window, I might show that at some point. They won't hear that kind of weird so you know the realism goes in and out for the most part this game is pretty realistic though all right so we just got this one guy he's not wearing a helmet so i'm gonna go ahead and switch to the dark gun should we need it yeah, we might just bip him from right here and then bam we're good to go now we just need to get this guy out of here yeah i know miller it's all part of the plan see that radio is glowing 
and also they can see us through the window so you want to be quick about this and you know, we grab the cassette tape and we got kids in america the real song no rip off or cover or uh what do they call it nightcore where they just lower the the volume of the of the voice of the character singing the, the person singing anyway those are usually turn out to be really good britney uh britney spears songs and nightcore songs so now we just need to get out of here and try not to get seen by anyone on the way out. It looks like everybody's kind of looking outwards. No one's going to be looking inside the base for a bad guy. They're looking on the outside for a bad guy. And we already cleared out this area. So all we need to do is just head out this way. And we should be good to go. We're about 50 meters out. So yeah, if we want to put this guy down right here and just string him up, we're good to go. And that's pretty much mission complete. Oh, and there's this bread. I was wondering what that was. I'll tell the client we sent the target to a place outside of heaven. Boss, your objective's complete. Exfiltrate out of the hot zone by chopper or on land. Don't hang around. All right, so now we just need to get out of here. I don't think there's uh Yeah, I guess we can we can send the chopper there. Requested. So now we just need to get out of here and and uh, head to the chopper. Chopper usually takes a pretty good bit of time, so you know. Uh, I would usually go ahead and call it in. Plus, it will wait on you for a pretty good bit of time, too. So you don't have to worry about that, either. I'm going to go around out this way. I don't think that guy will see us. Um, if he does, you know, we'll, we'll just duck down and we'll take him out. Whatever needs to happen, I'll make it happen, okay? This isn't like the Assassin's Creed walkthrough we did. This is going to be professional stuff. All right. So we might take this guy with us, too, just because he's on the way. And uh just want to sneak up behind him, super Sam Fisher style. And then, and, mm, right in the face. Oh, wow, he did a weird Michael Jackson move for a minute there, but he's okay now. We'll take him with us. I think there's a side objective to get, like, some materials somewhere around here. And if I recall, I think they're over here. Yeah, this one. I think this is one of the side objectives. It's kind of a weird little side objective because I don't think there's anything Extraction particularly special about those materials. It's just like a normal amount of materials. Oh, it looks like so those guys we extracted paid off. Our R&D department went up and now we can make a smoke grenade, which is actually a very useful weapon. Okay, I can't climb that for some reason. I'm also not a big sprinter. I like to like jog everywhere. I hope that's okay with you guys. Because I feel like if I'm sprinting all the time, you know, during the super cool action sequences when I need to sprint, it's not going to feel as good. You know, plus it gives me more time to talk to you guys. And you guys are like my only friends, so I want to talk to you. So, you know, how was your day today? You know, mine was okay. Went to Sheets. I, I picked me up a, a Little Caesars deep dish. And then went to Sheets and ate it there. Uh, but with like a, uh, I, got, I got my drink from them. So I, I wanted to get something from them. I didn't want to just use their table for nothing. So I, I got me a Coke. I like my Coke. I like my Coke, and Coca-Cola is pretty good, too. I like that. Hey, you see what I did there? So there you go. That's that mission. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as uh, Christopher Walken would say. Oh, we also got a battle dress. I think that's something for the horse. Kind of like horse armor. Oh, and the Western Tuck and uh, Parade Tuck, that's actually DLC horse armor. He also says different stuff depending on what you got. Uh, that was A rank. Probably because of time. Yeah, 13 minutes. Uh, yeah, we could have really sprinted through that. I could have went way faster than that, but I wanted to you know, tone it down a little bit. Uh, maybe accuracy too a little bit, but really, like I said in a previous part, it comes down to time and combat alerts, really, and uh, side objectives, that kind of stuff. Mostly just time. Also, on the, I think it might have been the previous mission or something. I was wondering why my score was so bad and why the time said 35 minutes it was because it was counting the time we spent in uh phantom cigar mode like waiting because we waited for like 12 hours or something like that waited for night time and went from day to night and i think it counts that as time too it kind of like converts you know in-game hours to real-time minutes kind of deal like that so i'm not actually sure how long daytime and nighttime last um, if I had to guess, probably like 15 minutes each or something, a rough estimate, you know. 
and also starring No One Cares. And there you go. We got another tape. We'll get around to those eventually. I'm actually kind of thinking about how to get into that. Uh, oh, yeah. We now arm our helicopter. Alright, so there you go. He just talked about what I was probably about to talk about when we got back to the helicopter and had time to talk about it. Customization. Yeah, there's a lot of customization in this. Oh, that's, um, yeah, these are one of my favorite. I like the guys with the tattoos. These are actually, yep, there's my fa This is probably my favorite uh, staff member in the whole game. This is actually, I think, a DLC, or no, it's like a pre-order DLC staff member. Like, depending on where you pre-ordered the game, uh, you got different kinds. You got two uh, special limited time staff members that aren't that aren't super great in the long run, but here early on, a B is pretty good for us. And also, they're you know they're unique too. They're the only people that look like that. N you're never gonna find anyone else that has the foxhound tattoo. And I think some of the other ones have like a butterfly tattoo if you pre-order from like Best Buy or something like that. Oh look, we even got the gunman guy. I wasn't even going for that. Um, so that dude's skill is gunman. That means when you deploy this him into a mission, um, his reflex time is longer. So that's definitely one of the more useful ones. There's some out there that aren't super great. Like there's a guy, I forget what the name of the skill is, but when he picks flowers, he gets like double flowers or something like that. I guess if you're into flowers, I've never really had a big need for him. Uh, you could get that guy and I think sell flowers. Flowers go for a decent price. Maybe early on that'd be something good to have. But I'm uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. Like Amber Fox and I think like... Oh, I did something. I just hit the pause button. Viewing your iDroid help. Oh yeah, you can hit the start button at any time. Or it's the select button and you can, you know, it'll give you tips. Oh yeah, if you play this game by yourself, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the aerial chopper. So, uh, I'm not going to do, I'm probably going to do a lot of development stuff off screen and staff management, um, and databasing. I'll go over this real quick. This is, um, you can see like different wild animals you've caught, different plants, code names you've unlocked that you can use. Uh, also documentation is where you'll see blueprints, key items, posters, and memento photos, which we'll get to later. Um, and as far as like, uh, oh, resources, I guess I can talk about this. This is where you can go to sell resources or just look at resources if you want. So here's our owned, uh, this is processed and this is unprocessed. We don't have any unprocessed. Here's our plants. You hit the A button, you can sell. Yeah, they go for like 500 a piece. So, you know, maybe that might be worth it pretty early on, you know. Uh, how many do we got anyway? We got 20. That's an easy 10 grand. That's actually a pretty good bit of money here early on so you know if you didn't want those flowers there you go that's how you do that you can also sell your vehicles if you have any or placed weapons you know you can find like um god what do they call it like mortars you can find mortars out in the field steal those although i'm not sure if you can sell them more than it would cost you to string them up which is i think five to ten thousand dollars so you know be wary of that but here's our customization we can go ahead and change the helicopter and stuff i guess we can look at it i usually don't change much with the helicopter say aside from armor because then you're going to be paying the gmp price the most expensive thing i found is the blackfoot which um uh, um it, it this makes the um uh, what does it do what does it do uh it slow it it slows um departure time down i guess you could say like you know how long it it takes for the helicopter to get to the landing zone it slows that down like when you call for a pickup then you have weapons and I put weapons on the thing and it comes standard with uh, a, um, a Gatling gun as you see there and I put weapons on it before and he usually always defaults to the Gatling gun you know even if you put missiles on there I maybe saw him use missiles once but for the most part he's gonna take most of the stuff out with a minigun he's gonna 
He's going to side. He's going to lean more towards that for the most part. So the only real thing you want is armor when you can get that. I guess you can also change the color of it too. If you want to do that. Ooh, this one looks neat. I never had that one before. We'll go with that one for now. So yeah, no super big deal. If you just want my two cents about the helicopter, I'd say just invest in armor because, you know, wait, kind of wasting your money for the other stuff. Because like I said, you get in missiles, he's not really going to use it. I also got some rewards up here. This will become more prevalent later, if I can say that word. Um, mainly because we don't have anything really unlocked that kind of revolves around that. But there is daily bonuses you can get if you're playing online. That, that's, that was our daily bonuses right there. And, uh, let's see, customization. You can customize your emblem. We'll stick with the standard, the DD emblem you see up top right. Base color. We'll probably stick with the standard base color too. There's a few colors to pick from. Yeah, you know, it looks like a pinkish. Got a tan, some red, black if you want that. I like the red, that actually looks kind of cool. I usually go with the blue. I like the blue. Uh, that green doesn't look super great. I'm, I feel bad for people who like green. I'll probably just stick with the orange. It's okay. And I don't think there was anything else really to look at. Avatar, that was an online character. You, you remember him from the very beginning of the game. The whole confusing things. Like, I gotta change your face, but not change your face. That's what the doctor said. He changed our face, but didn't. He fooled everybody. So, uh, we're just going to get back into the... We're just going to go to the next mission. Uh, usually, I would recommend doing some side missions, but this is a walkthrough. We're not going to fiddle around with these. These are like straight up side missions. Uh, this one, Extract an Interrogator. I'll probably do off screen that one. Inter in, in, or Interpreter. Not Interrogate. Interpreter. Uh, that's very important in case you want to understand what people be saying all the time. Because we don't speak Russian. It's weird. I thought Big Boss could do anything and everything, but he can't. Uh, so we gotta do, uh, we're got we going to go to the next mission. Uh, C2W, destroy some comm units or equipment. This one's pretty simple. Uh, you know, but, uh, well, uh, well, you know, well, I'll try and spice it up best way I can. So nothing really has changed much. We're just going to go right into it we didn't have anything really developed or anything like that um so nothing more to add there pretty much just have the c4 and this is the mission where you want to have the c4 the c4 is pretty much necessary on this mission and i think also hunter miller will point it out at some point during this mission and that's why there's no wait time on development of c4 it's, it's like as soon as you put the order in you get that the c4 out of it so uh because they'll, they'll point it out in this mission, and I just kind of already bought it ahead of time. That way we wouldn't have to have them drop it into us. We can just, you know, put it in our fanny pack as we jump off the helicopter. Boss, you need to disable the Soviets' reinforcement system by putting a hole in their base-to-base -base comms network. Head for the Eastern Communications Post and destroy its comms equipment. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. Alright, so this is pretty simple. Uh, we basically are going to this little outpost and we're going to be looking for communication equipment. Like big satell satellites or whatever. Actually, they're not super big. They're like medium size. Uh, there's a few side tasks you can be doing. Um, and I'll try... I'm just pretty much going off memory. This is not like a 100% walkthrough. It's not an ass walkthrough or anything like that. It's just, we're just, you know, we're just... Uh, uh, we're just nerding and burning, you know, whatever that means. We're just having some fun. That's what we're doing. But I'll, you know, I'll do what I can, where I can, and what I can remember. And, uh, what I can remember is you definitely want a vehicle or a horse for this mission. Because the helicopter doesn't drop you off anywhere close to where you want to be. Alright, so that's, this is kind of convenient, I didn't actually remember this, but it seems like uh, there's a uh, English speaking guy around here, or English to Russian translator, which is uh, definitely useful, so uh, what I like to do for these guys, they're not wearing like body armor or anything, so you just bip them, bip them once, and you know, like I showed in the last mission, after a few minutes, more like a few long seconds, They'll all fall asleep, and we can run down there and string up whoever we want. So, you know, now we're just playing the waiting game. As long as they're not wearing, like, armor or anything, because the dart won't go through armor or helmets or anything like that. 
But if they are wearing armor, uh, just bip them in the leg or the, the uh, anus. That dude just fell straight over. I like how he just dropped this guy. All right, so everybody should be asleep by now. We don't have uh, upgraded binoculars in in, uh, in my Let's Play. You might have saw that I was able to scan people and see exactly what they're good for. Alright, so it looks like this is the guy we're after, but uh, like I was saying before I, I got interrupted by Miller, um, you can uh, upgrade your binocs later in the game and it'll tell you what people are good for so we would know exactly which one of these guys was the interpreter. And I think that's pretty much all we want from this place, here's a side hop. Alright, so there you go, you might have heard what he said. Uh, now we uh, pretty much speak Russian now, so that's definitely going to come in handy since there's uh, quite a few Soviet soldiers around. Uh, not sure what they're doing in Africa, probably story related stuff that I totally decided to skip over because I didn't want to pay attention. But there you go, that's that, this is this. Let's keep going with the mission, and that's pretty much what a side up's like, a typical side up. Uh, you know, most of them are kind of stuff like that, you know, no story related stuff, just more r based on like, it, more focused on upgrading your guy. I'm also looking for, yeah, I think this is it. It's hard to spot without your, uh, without your night vision goggles, but see, there's like a crack in the wall. You can actually climb these, and we do want to be climbing this one. Crack climbing, so that's what they're calling it. Um, you can hit the select button there if you want to learn more about that. But I have my scarf, so I'm good to glow. Good to glow? I'm good to go. So these are some wild animals, but uh, these are. You see many animals in the field. Truth is, an environmental NGO has asked us to remove wild animals from combat zones. If you have the time, can you extract some back here? There's a reward in it for us. Yeah, so basically what he's saying there is we've been hired by pretty much a bunch of zookeepers to extract these animals out of this war zone. And we will get paid for that. If we, uh, you know, get enough of them. Uh, we'll get paid a decent amount if we get enough of them. We get paid no matter what. Um, also, uh, there's a side objective up here. This is why I came up this way other than, you know, having uh, the high ground. There's a diamond hidden away right here. It's a large diamond. So yeah, you definitely want to get that one. That was a that's a really good one. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. All right, so he says locate communication equipment. I'm not super interested in that because I know where they are. This is what they are. They look like that. There's one. There's one. trying to mark as many people as I can before I get down there into the wild and there's another one right there it's kind of hard to see um, also if you knock anyone out and you want to extract them from this area uh, I usually take them back to this little area right here behind this box this is a really good area no one seems to notice anything from this area Alright, so you saw I placed C4 on that one. That's pretty much what we're going to be doing. We're pretty much going to go through and place C4 on all of these, and then we're going to get out of here and blow it up. So that's like the general idea around here, what we're going to be uh, going for. I want to get this guy out of the way, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the... Oop, I missed. I have a better time in, in third person when I'm shooting guys with the little dart gun like that, especially without a scope. I usually only go first person with a scope. Um, 
just works out better for me. This is how bad I am at this game, I guess. Uh, let's see. I guess we can go over here and place more C4 on this one. And I don't know if you actually have to place it. I don't know if you actually have to place it right on the thing or just near it. I'm sure near it would be fine too. You know, it doesn't really matter, but you know, somewhere in the general area is necessary. All right, hopefully this guy over here doesn't see us. Yeah, it's really hard for him to see you around. Oh, didn't mean to throw that guy. Hopefully no one uh, heard that. There's nothing to see here. I know it's our objective to blow up that thing, and that's kind of like an LZ satellite. If you blow that up, then the helicopter can land here. So if you were to clear her by out, then maybe that'd be preferable. But otherwise, it's considered a very, very hot zone. Not a very good landing zone. Another large diamond here. Definitely want that. And anytime you see the red containers, you know, it's probably Subject worth it. Leave the rest to us. It's probably worth it to get it out of here. Uh, so it is a side objective to blow that up. I, uh, I'm not sure if I'll, I, I might go for it. It's also a side objective to get that container right there out of here, but I don't think we have an upgraded Fulton device that can take, that can lift that yet, so, um, you know, it might not be, uh, preferable to try and get that. Also, it will alert everybody if you were to actually try and get that thing out of here. So I'm gonna try and be stealthy about this. We'll see what we can do. There's a few things down here it looks like I want to be getting. Right there is a poster. That might be our. I think that's our first poster we'll be getting. And I also hear music playing, which means there's a radio around here somewhere. With a cassette tape. I don't think there's anything worth. There's anything other than just like collecting music for the cassette tapes. I don't think there's like an achievement or anything like that for getting cassette tapes. I'm gonna go prone right here. Oh, somebody sees this. There we go. We got that guy. I'm upset that had to happen. I did. I wish he wouldn't have saw us. Oh, these guys see us. They're at least aware of our presence. Suppressed weapon, okay. Well, that's no good. We'll try and place the C4 on this thing. I, I usually have a hard time with this thing. It, oh, well, we need. Gotta sleep. We're just trying to make our way to the next thing at this point. Uh, that way we can blow it up and get out of here. We're just taking guys out left and right at this point. that guy falls asleep before he comes over here and sees us. Yeah, this could have went a little bit better. I don't know where it went wrong. Oh yeah, when that guy saw us, I totally didn't see that guy. So that was like a little bit of a problem. That was that was on my that was my bad. Uh, that's on me cuz you know, I could have reconned the area a little bit better. This guy should fall asleep for too long. I'm pretty sure we bipped him. Yeah, there we go. All right, so he's asleep. Uh, these guys are asleep, so we can go ahead and get them out of here. No big deal. Also, if you're going to be taking guys out left and right like I'm doing, you want to be a little bit wary of your suppressor. Because it will, it will go, it will break on you, so you want to watch out for that. This guy's wearing body armor, I think, so we're going to try and bip him in the leg. Alright, so, like Ocelot said there, it looks like they're giving up the search for now on account that they didn't find anything and uh, they didn't detect anything else I mean they didn't see the dead bodies yet so we're okay this dude should fall asleep in a minute and we should be good to go for the most part I think we're okay to go ahead and climb up on this thing we should be okay oh. I didn't mean to stand that can be a little bit rough sometimes we'll go ahead and we'll take these guys out and this guy just so he don't talk Says we captured the outpost. So that's good. 
It's a shame we don't have more explosives, so we did end up taking everyone out in this outpost, so that's kind of good. If I had more explosives, we could, um... Well, actually, I might go back and take the explosives off of this thing over here. He's coming too. Roger that. I was going to say, if we had more explosives, we could blow up, uh... What was I going to blow up? I was going to blow up that thing, wasn't I? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yeah, we don't have... See, we have a 0% chance of getting that thing out of here. Alright, so now we just need to blow everything up. And then we should be good to go. Alright, so it looks like we got that good. And now I can show you this. See, now we have a landing zone. And, um... It would be red in the event that you... Um, if, if, if you blew that up and then there were still enemies around, but since we took care of everybody, we're, we're pretty much good to go. Another thing that might be preferable is to drive out of here in the truck. If you, I think if you leave with the truck, if you leave the hot zone with the truck, it will be considered yours and you get to keep it. But, uh, I'm not too super worried about it. We'll get vehicles eventually. We got the horse for now, so it's not a super big deal. Uh, I think I hear movement. I don't know, maybe not. Um, but since we cleared everybody out, you know, you could also go through here and look at everything you wanted if you want to. We pretty much got everything we need. So yeah, it wasn't as stealthy as I wanted to be. It's funny how that one guy kind of turned everything bad, sort of. I mean, we didn't get spotted. There was no combat alerts, so that's good. Uh, that one guy did start shooting at us, but I don't think that's a combat alert because he didn't know where we were. That's why he didn't hit us. He was just firing in the dark. But yeah, this base, I, I, I find most of the time I come here, I end up clearing it out for one reason or another. I got a long history with this base. I think we actually covered this base in the Let's Play. So, you know, it's probably boring for you guys to see it again, but hey, I can't help it. At least we didn't get any blood on our clothes. Uh, since we did use reflex mode a lot, um, there's a mechanic, I don't know if it's taught us about it yet, but, um, you have, like, the stress thing, uh, the more, the more you use reflex mode, the more stressed they call your character, so, you know, the reflex mode event, it keeps going, it, it lasts less and less each time you use it, and the way to counter that is you go to, you go back to mother base and take a bath. And it will say, like, replenished, or it will say, like, cleared your mind and refreshed your soul or something like Something weird like that. It's, it doesn't say exactly that. It's stupid. So we get, like, a B. Yeah, B. Took too long. And, uh, you know, that was, I think that was pretty much it, really. Took too long. Maybe killed too many people. I think there is a no kills bonus. We did get paid an awful lot there. We are racking in the money. We get uh, cassette tapes, yeah, and um, oh, base uh, development unit has been established. That's good. That's like where your process. That's unpro. That's where unprocessed materials go through. And like the better you build that up, the more materials you get, um, and the faster you get them and stuff like that. That way you can keep building things with R and D and other platforms. I'll probably explain that. Material refinement and platform construction. I'll start with the material refinement part. The base development unit procures material resources on a regular basis according to its level. The materials are stored in containers and placed on the deck of Mother Base. Once they're finished being processed, they can finally be put to use. By using these materials to build new platforms, we'll be able to add a greater number of staff to our ranks. We don't need any specific instructions from you to refine the materials. But I want you to be the one to decide how we construct platforms. Once we have sufficient GMP and the required material resources, you can issue construction orders from your iDroid. Alright, so that's kind of like a uh, more in-depth overview, overview of what I just said. We also get to look at all the guys we got. I'm pretty much going to skip this. Nothing really to see there, especially they put the, the primary guy we extracted, the interpreter. Uh, right there front and center so we're good to go in that end and there you go that's two missions down I didn't think it would take as long we received a back channel request from Langley we find a piece of new American military hardware that's gone missing in the mountains of Afghanistan it's a difficult mission but I 
I'd say you're back in top form by now. Check your iDroid for the details. Alright, so there you go. I didn't think it was take it would take as long as it did. But uh, you know, that's two missions down. Uh stay tuned for two more. Or probably more than that. There's quite a few missions for us to be doing and a lot more story to be uncovering and a lot more use to get out of the scarf. Um, so I want to thank you guys for watching this time. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.